Hey everyone, it's Inky Tiger here, and today's topic is pretty near and dear to my heart because it is about pursuing digital art. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it when you need to ball on a budget. So without further ado, I present to you Ballin' on a Budget Digital Art Edition. So just because you want to make digital art doesn't mean it has to be super expensive. Uh, with advancements in technology, it's now easier than ever to make digital art. Uh, you can start your drawings digitally, but for those who prefer starting with a traditional sketch, you used to need a scanner back in the day. Whether it was really high quality Epson stuff, or was it just like a, one of those scanners from Walmart, didn't really matter. You just needed a scanner to get your work onto the computer. Not anymore. With technology advancements, smartphones and tablets have almost replaced the need for scanners. Scanners are still good for really high quality pictures if you need them for a professional job. But if you just need a sketch, they're really not necessary. You just take a picture with your cell phone or tablet and you can upload the picture to uh, a cloud or a drive or just email yourself the file and voila, you've got it on your computer and you've got it accessible to pretty much any computer that you need to put it on. For art programs, Paint Tool Sci is a very popular program uh, and it's for a good reason. It packs a pretty powerful punch for a fraction of the price of Adobe Photoshop. Adobe is excellent if you can swing the student discount, but for those of us who are not eligible for that anymore, maybe you need a more cost-effective alternative. So, some free programs that I really like are Fire Alpaca and Mischief. Uh, Fire Alpaca is kind of like Photoshop, and it has a lot of really great features, including uh, layers and how you can alter images. It's, it's a really nice, comprehensive program with not a lot of, uh, doesn't take up a lot of space, which is really cool. Mischief is an awesome program and it's really unique in that it has a feature called the infinite canvas. So it's really awesome for sketching because you can draw all over your screen and then you basically take like a hand tool to move the screen over and you have more blank space, but you still have your drawing where you originally put it. You just have a bigger canvas. So that's a lot of fun to play with if you're doing a lot of sketch work. And that's free, but I think there's also a full version that has layer features. Like it, It's like Photoshop, but I think it only costs like $25. For my animators out there, a really good free resource for 2D animators is OpenTunes. I'm not sure if this is true, but I, I was told that uh, some of the people behind Studio Ghibli actually work with it. So uh, apparently it's no slouch, and if you do animation, you might want to check it out. I mean, it's free, so you've got nothing to lose. <laughs> um, for my 3D animators, or people that are interested in trying out 3D animation, there is um, an open source program called Blender. And <laughs> back in the day, it wasn't all that powerful, but it's actually gotten a lot of good upgrades since then. And I've heard a lot of good things about um, modeling and creation in Blender lately. Uh, if you're a student, I believe the Autodesk programs are actually free. And they have some really powerful software if you can get your hands on it. So <laughs> make use of those student discounts while you can. Or access to free programs, I suppose. Now for my tablet users, um, I would recommend Procreate. Uh, it's an app that is a lot like, again, Photoshop or any of the Adobe programs, and it has layer features that you can work with and lots of different brushes. I want to say it's like $12 or something, and that's like a one-time purchase, so that's way cheaper than most art programs that you're going to buy. And the cool thing is, a lot of professionals have been turning to Procreate lately to do a lot of their professional work. So... It, <laughs> It also packs a powerful punch. Say that five times fast. No, don't, just kidding. But that's another alternative to Photoshop. And now we get to the meat of it. Tablets for drawing. So 
When you're looking at what kind of tablets that you want to get for your digital work, I would say there are three things that you really want to look at. So based on your needs, what is most important? Do you need a screen to work on? Do you need it to be portable? Or do you have a certain price range that you need to stay within? Since this is balling on a budget though, I'm gonna try and stay within the lower end of the price range because more expensive tablets can cost a couple thousand dollars easily. Uh, if you need a screen and you need something portable, I've heard really good things about using the app Procreate with an Apple Pen and the iPad Pro. You really don't need the Pro unless you're needing really high graphic quality for professional projects. But a lot of professionals actually use Procreate for um, their client work nowadays. They can do this because the tablet, the tablet image quality is so high. If you need something that's more on the inexpensive end of the tablet spectrum, I guess, <laughs> Wacom makes really good quality tablets that will last you a long time. At least from my experience, my very first tablet was uh, <laughs> a Bamboo Fun, and I had gotten it in high school, and it lasted me a good 10 years before I had to replace it. So they are pricier, but in, at least from my experience, they're built to last. So they make good quality tablets that aren't as expensive as the infamous Cintiq. The Intuos packs a punch if you don't need to work directly on a screen. So you can totally take the Intuos in a backpack because they're light, but you will also need a laptop. Whereas if you're getting just an iPad, all you really need is the pen. It's all a matter of preference, to be honest. As long as you have a laptop, you can totally just swing it with like an Intuos tablet. But if you don't have a laptop and you just have like a regular computer tower, <laughs> you might want to go for something that's completely portable. Unless you take your tower with you, I don't know what your life is. <laughs> as far as alternatives to Wacom tablets go, I've heard good things about the Huon, but um, I have yet to try it for myself, so kind of go for it at your own risk. Huon, Hui, the, the, the H1, the H1, it's the H1. So yeah, this list is definitely not definitive. Uh, the cool thing about digital art is that it can be what you make of it, essentially. So it can be pixels, vector art, sketches, 3D, photo manipulation, and so on. That means there are as many ways to make digital art as you can dream up. So I know someone who uses a Kindle to do their digital pieces, and they actually turn out really good. So don't be afraid to get creative with it. You can invest in all that fancy stuff if you like. Uh, it has a good reputation for a reason, but don't let cost keep you from trying digital art if you're interested in it. Please don't hold yourself back. It's a lot more accessible than you might think. And that's about all I've got for today. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.